9th of October 2024. In this episode of Staring into the Fire, Seeing the Coals and the Ashes, I want to talk about the Palestinians. Now, most white South Africans don't really understand what happened to the Palestinians because they are totally committed to what the narrators want to tell you from referencing to the Bible why the Israelis are entitled to doing what they are doing. But they never, for a moment, look at the realities on the ground and they get extremely emotional about it and you hear a lot of mentioning of the God's chosen people and the Holy Land and all of that. I'm sure you have heard all of that. But let's take all of that emotion out of the system. And let's just look at the fact that what happened to the Palestinian people. Now there is people that are trying to tell you that Palestine was basically uninhabited and there were no real citizens, indigenous people of Palestine. That's what they're trying to tell you and that's a story they're trying to sell you. And I'm afraid Triple X Media is playing a big role in that. But let's be objective about it and look at it. Now, not many South Africans, and I'm talking again white South Africans, are aware of the phrase the Nakba. The Nakba, all you need to know explained in five maps and charts. The 1948 forced expulsion of Palestinians from their homeland has created the longest unresolved refugee crisis in modern history. And if you look at this image, you can see, and the commentary on the image is, the Palestinians flee from an unidentified village in the Galilee after Zionists' attacks in 1948. Every year on the 15th of May, Palestinians mark the Nakba, catastrophe in English when around 750,000 Palestinians were forcibly expelled from their homes by Zionist militias to make way for the creation of Israel in 1948. It is an event that has shaped politics in Israel and Palestine ever since, and one which Palestinians say continue today in different forms of the war occupation, siege, home demolitions, land confiscations, and more. What is the Nakba? Nakba, Arabic for catastrophe, refers to the ethnic cleansing of Palestine in 1948 by the Zionist militias to make way for the creation of Israel. Now, if you look at this map, you can see historic Palestine pre-1920 and according to the legend in the uh, top that was all Palestine. Then mandatory Palestine 1922 to 1948 and on that map you can see that black spots there. That is Jewish owned land. And then the next map you can see the UN partition plan of 1947. And now you can see the purple Palestine has shrunk tremendously and you see that large grey area. Now that was the UN partition plan in 1947. And then in the next map you can look at the post Nakba and what do you see there? There's a small strip which we know as Gaza today and then there's that purple which was referred to as the West Bank. And then in the last map, you look at how it is today and you can see all the Palestinian land has been occupied by the Israelis. The events of the Nakba can be traced back to 1917, 
when Britain in the Balfour Declaration promised Zionist leaders that it would help establish in Palestine a national home for the Jewish people. After capturing Jerusalem from the Ottoman Empire at the end of World War I, 1914 to 1918, Britain ruled over Palestine between 1923 to 1948 under a mandate from the League of Nations. Under 25 years of British rule, Palestinians were repeatedly suppressed while European Jewish immigration flourished and the Zionist groups were trained and armed. And then we look at the Nakba, a timeline. 1917 Balfour Declaration. Britain promises Zionist a national home for Jewish people in Palestine. Weeks later, British troops captured Jerusalem from the Ottoman Empire. 1923 British Mandate. Britain is given a mandate over Palestine during which it helps Zionists form armed groups and increase the Jewish population by tenfold through immigration from Europe. 1947 UN Partition Plan Britain decides to end the mandate and the UN adopts a partition plan that gives Zionists 55% of Palestine, even though Jews own 5% of the land. So they get 55% of Palestine although they only owed, owned 5% of the land. 1947 to 1949 Zionist forces expel 80% of the Palestinian population from their homeland. The State of Israel is unilaterally declared on 14 May 1948. Zionist forces used bombing campaigns, massacres and psychological warfare to drive Palestinians out, indiscriminately killing thousands. After Palestinians and Arabs rejected the UN proposal, Zionist militias attack Palestinians in a premeditated campaign to forcibly expel them, and it was an ethnic cleansing campaign. 530 villages destroyed, 30 plus massacres committed, and 13,000 Palestinians killed by the end of the campaign. 1967 Arab-Israeli War Israel occupies the remaining 22% of historic Palestine, the West Bank, East Jerusalem and the Gaza Strip. Today, Palestinian refugees live in dozens of camps across the world, while 5 million more live under occupation. With Britain deciding to end its mandate over Palestine in 1947 and the United Nations failing to enforce the alternative administration, Zionists began attacking Palestinians as part of a systematic campaign of forced expulsion. And look at these maps, Zionist military campaign. And you see there's that uh, peachy color villages destroyed December 1947 to 14 May 1948. And the green is villages destroyed after Israel declares independence. And the gray is land captured by Israel. On the first map, December 1947, drawing upon plans devised from 1945, which culminated in Plan Delay, Adopted in March 1948, Zionist militias attacked Palestinians to drive them out. Between December 1947 and May, 14 May 1948, Zionist forces destroyed 200 villages and expelled 175,000 Palestinians. Then we get to the next map, May 1948. After capturing 20% of the land, including major strategic locations, Israel declared independence on 14 May 1948. It then continued to attack and terrorize Palestinians, leading to the destruction of an additional 300 villages and the mass exodus of 600,000 Palestinians. Now, if you look at this map and you look at it in relation with the legend at the top, the Pitchy color is villages destroyed. The green ones is villages captured 
after Israel declares independence and the grey is land captured by Israel. Look at how they are cleaning that country. Then we look at this map, July 1949. Now you can see all the grey is captured land by the Israelis. And those two purple blocks, the West Bank and Gaza, is the only Palestinian land left. Hostilities between Israel and Arab armies officially ended in July 1949 with the signing of an armistice agreement between Israel and Arab states. By then, Israel had captured 78% of historic Palestine, destroyed and depopulated around 530 villages and towns, and expelled 750,000 Palestinians. Now, there's one Afrikaans commentator that made a big story about it and said that the Arabs had an army of 40 million soldiers and the Israelis had 650,000 and they won the war. Now here you can clearly hear the war was ended with the signing of an armistice agreement between Israel and the Arab states. Nobody won that war. But I don't know if that guy knows what 40 million soldiers look like. By the end of the war, Zionist forces had killed 13,000 Palestinians, destroyed and depopulated around 530 villages and towns, committed at least 30 massacres and expelled 750,000 people. Around 150,000 Palestinians remained within the boundaries of the newly formed State of Israel, many of them internally displaced. Then we get to this, the aftermath of the Nakba. 30 plus massacres committed, 13,000 plus Palestinians killed, 530 villages destroyed, 750,000 forcibly displaced. Israel declared on 78% of historic Palestine. Those expelled in 1948 and their descendants number 5.8 million refugees today, living mostly in neighboring Arab countries. Israel has never allowed Palestinian refugees to return to their homeland, making their plight the longest unresolved refugee crisis in modern history. Where are the Palestinian refugees now? Around 80% of the Palestinian population was expelled in 1948 by Zionist forces to neighboring countries. Today, more than 5.8 million registered refugees live in dozens of camps in the occupied West Bank, the Gaza Strip, Jordan, Syria and Lebanon. And you can see in Jordan, 2.3 million refugees in 10 camps. Gaza, 1.5 million refugees, 8 camps. West Bank, 0.9 million refugees, 19 camps. Syria, 0.5 million refugees in 12 camps. Lebanon, 0.2 million refugees in 12 camps. Now, if you look at that objectively, then you cannot come to any other conclusion in that this was a Zionist invasion of Palestine. And that invasion was backed financially by the West and supported militarily mostly by America. And we see it today, what's happening in Gaza. They've already thrown more kilograms of bombs in Gaza than, was throw, that was, than what was thrown on Dresden during World War II more explosives than the, what was thrown on Nagasaki or Hiroshima, I'm not sure, one of the two. Try and think about it. That Gaza Strip is five kilometers wide and 30 kilometers long. They have destroyed that place and they are bombing indiscriminately, killing and murdering people. And the, uh, most of the people in South Africa don't pay attention to that, the white people. They don't pay attention to the fact that over 40,000 people have been killed in Gaza already in the past year, of which 70% is women and children. The rubble will take apparently something like 10 years to remove from Gaza. 
And that rubble contains unexploded ammunition and corpses. There's 10,000 people missing. They can only assume that they're in that rubble. But there's holier than thou South Africans sit here and they cheer for Israel. Well, these atrocities against the Palestinians started way back in 1940 already. But it's the same situation with what's happening in the Ukraine. Roughly that same South African whites that supports Israel, supports Ukraine. And they say the war started on 23 or 21 February 2021, uh, 2022. That war in Ukraine started way back in 20... The shit started in 2007. But they don't want to pay attention to that because it doesn't suit the narrative. I hope you can do something with these facts and that it gives you a different perspective. What you have to focus on is the killing of the people and the vast numbers of children that are being killed. But those, those Zionists, they've got a name for killing the children. They call it mowing the grass. They did the same. They and the British did the same here in South Africa in the concentration camps, killing the Boer women and children. That is what they do. Please give me a like and a subscribe and share the thing. Thank you for your support.